from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this televised Mass. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Anne Pulikal from Calgary, Alberta. This Mass is being offered for Thomas Goodchild, Orlando Millian, Anama Davasi and all her family members, and for those who have no one to pray for them and for her personal intentions and finances. Our thanks go out to Anne Pulikal for the gift of the televising of this Mass to the faithful of Canada and across the world. And now as we begin our Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord, the God of mercy, to forgive us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, and we are sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. On this feast of St. John Vianney, we pray in a special way for all the parish priests in the different parts of the world. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest St. John Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, grant, we pray, that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, write in a book all the words that I have spoken to you. For thus says the Lord, your hurt is incurable, your wound is grievous. There is no one to uphold your cause, no medicine for your wound, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you. They care nothing for you. For I have dealt you the blow of an enemy, the punishment of a merciless foe, because your guilt is great, because your sins are so numerous. Why do you cry out over your hurt? Your pain is incurable, because your guilt is great, because your sins are so numerous, I have done these things to you. Thus says the Lord, I am going to restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and have compassion on his dwellings. The city shall be re rebuilt upon its mound and the citadel set on its rightful site. Out of them shall come thanksgiving and the sound of merrymakers. I will make them many and they shall not be few. I will make them honored and they shall not be disdained. Their children shall be as of old, their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all who oppress them. Their prince shall be one of their own, their ruler shall come from their midst. I will bring him near, and he shall approach me. For who would otherwise dare to approach me, says the Lord? And you shall be my people, and I will be your God the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The nations 
nations will fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion, he will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute, and will not despise their prayer. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord that he looked down from his holy height. From heaven the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die. The Lord will rebuild up Zion again and appear in all glory. The children of your servant shall live secure. Their offspring shall be established in your presence, so that the name of the Lord may be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When peoples gather together, and kingdoms to worship the Lord. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Master, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The scribes and the Pharisees came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? Jesus answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides for the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. The Gospel of the Lord. The reading from Jeremiah, our first reading that Catherine did for us, reminds me of a popular food out in Guyana called sweet and sour, though today in the reading it was the reverse. First you had the sour and then you had the sweet. The people of Israel had abandoned the covenant, they had broken the commandments, they had not kept the traditions. 
and God had put a vindication on them, a punishment on them. And the words are pretty stark and clear. Your hurt is incurable. Your wound is grievous. Your lovers have left you. They have no compassion for you. And I have allowed your enemies to prevail over you. Now, this reading is good enough for the Old Testament, but it has changed. But very often we latch onto that idea of God, a God who is vengeful, a God who is out to get us, a God who is like a policeman. You fall and you're going to be punished. But that is not the God that we know, the God of compassion, the God of love, the God of mercy. But in the Old Testament, they had to express any little disaster that took place whether it was a flu epidemic, a corona epidemic, a Lyme disease, they had to say it was God who did it because we had sinned. But the true picture of God is in the second part of Jeremiah. I will restore the fortunes of David. I will have compassion on their dwellings. And as they rebuild, there will be sounds of gratitude and joy. It is a picture of great hope and promise. It is a picture that my father very often gave to me. My mother, who would be 101 today, if she had not died eight years ago, was of the same attitude. Both of them were very religious, but not obtrusively. They had not that flashy type of religion. They did not have that sugary piety. They would tell me, look, you will commit sin, you will do something wrong. But God has one concern. God does not want you to remain down on the ground. God does not count how many times you fall. God only is bothered with the times you get up. And my mother would tell me, hold your head up high and keep your mind fixed on the things that you have to do, and you will achieve it. Today we celebrate the feast of St. John Vianney, and both my mother and my father would remind me of this great saint who was unobtrusive in all respects. St. John Vianney was born three years, sorry, St. John Vianney was three years old when the French Revolution took place in 1789. And he had to face those terrible guillotines and the atrocities that were going on in his beloved country of France. France was a country that was considered to be the eldest daughter of the church. It gave all its um, strength, all its support to the Catholic Church. And because of that power, both the nobility and the church began to live a lavish lifestyle, which caused a scandal within the church. There was a great deal of corruption. And this was not the first time. Two centuries ago, before with Cardinal Richelieu, and he himself in France had the same lavish lifestyle. Today, we see not in France only, but in many places, that same lavish lifestyle, which is totally foreign to the lifestyle that Jesus encouraged us to live, to live simple lives, to live the lives of the poor. Blessed are the pure in spirit. Blessed are the poor in reality. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are peacemakers. That's the lifestyle that Jesus wanted for us as priests. And as a result, the French Revolution took place because the, noble, the nobility and the clergy would oppress the poor and the peasants. And when this uh, enormous uh, injustice was done, instead of calling to mind, instead of calling to task the nobles and the bourgeoisie, the clergy praised them, which meant that when the revolution took place, it was not only against the nobles, but against the church as well. And it was in this atmosphere that St. John Vianney brought up, was brought up. He spent his teenage life, or not his teenage, yes, his teenage life during the French Revolution. But he also saw that there were pastors that were really considerate, 
pastors who work for the people. And these, these uh, priests had to work in secrecy because the church was considered unlawful at that time. And priests were a fair game for the revolutionary. And so when Pope John, I mean, when St. Francis, uh, St. John Vianney saw this, he decided he was going to be a priest. He joined the seminary, but the revolution caused them to have a draft and all, even in the seminary, were called to work in the army. He decided he wasn't going to do so because he felt sick at the last moment. Later on, when he was ordained, he was sent back to his own hometown of Druli, where he was the parish priest. And later on, to the village of Ars, where he was, became very famous for his counseling, for hearing confessions. St. Jean Vianney is the parish patron of all our parish priests. They are the hard workers, the backbone of all the parishes. They do not get the fame and the glory that religious get, but they do the grunge work. They are more or less like our general practitioners. They keep us alive, they nourish us, and they carry us on. I've been very fortunate to meet many lovely parish priests here in the Toronto Diocese. I've gone to them for counseling and they have helped us. St. Jean Vianney, pray for us. Join me now as we pray together. For the church leaders and especially for our parish priests, as they continue to shepherd us and witness to Christ, we pray to the Lord. For courage, mercy, and patience in the heart of all our leaders, we pray to the Lord. For the dying and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we thank you for St. Jean Vianney, and we ask your special blessing on the parish priests wherever they are, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. To the praise and glory of our name for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you a sacrifice of praise in commemoration of St. John Vianney, O Lord, by which we, entrust, we trust to be delivered from the evils both present and to come. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For as on the festival of St. John Vianney, you bid your church rejoice, so do you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this year church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another the sign of peace wherever we are. O 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. For those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of St. John Vianney, that we may persevere in integrity in the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at one 383 6277 for details. He guides me where rich pastures grow along the verdant mead, where every day by pleasant way my hungering soul.